Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I finally made this chandelier using wax paper. Been wanting to do it for a while, so I'm going to show you how I did it. These are the supplies that we're going to need for our um, project. I have, I'm using this hole puncher. This is a two and one quarter inch hole punch, but you don't need it. You can use um, scissors to cut the circles if you don't have the hole puncher. I got these um, zip ties from Dollar Tree, Reynolds wax paper, don't use the Dollar Tree wax paper, parchment paper, um, a pair of scissors, a rotary cutter, and I used my mat, which is not pictured here, some thread, a needle, um, glue gun, and an iron. I also picked up two of these wreath holders, um, one small one, it was a two pack, and the regular size one. To begin, I'm using one sheet of parchment paper followed by three pieces of wax paper. And if I didn't mention before, save your time, get the Reynolds, don't use the Dollar Tree wax paper, it's not going to really melt and fuse together very well. So um, after that, we're going to follow up with another piece of parchment paper. So the three wax papers are sandwiched between the parchment paper to protect your iron from getting all the wax burnt onto it. And then starting from the middle, I'm just working my way out from the center to the corners. And I repeated this process about 20 times. So I have 20 pieces of fused um, triple layered wax paper at the end of all of this. And once I'm done ironing all of the wax papers together, I'm pulling out my, um, my rotary mat cutter and my rotary cutter. Also, um, here's my paper cutter, the hole punch, the die hole punch, and you can see it's two and a quarter inch. So I am lining up right here. I'm starting at a half inch. I'm lining up the corner of my paper. I'm not really going by the numbers. I'm just measuring half inch and then two inches and I'm cutting on that straight line there and I just keep doing this until all of the wax paper is cut up into approximately two and a half inch size strips. And that's because I wanna leave enough, um, uh, enough wiggle room for my hole punch to be able to be lined up correctly in the circle. Have enough, basically have enough room to work with when it comes to punching the holes, come, when it comes to punching the holes out. So now we've come to punch the holes out and I'm lining up four at a time, stacking them on top of each other and making sure that they're all evenly aligned and I just start punching the holes out and you you don't have to use a hole punch but um, I got this one, I waited for a coupon for 50% 50, uh, 50 off at Joann's and I had my eye on this thing for a while so that's when I... I purchased it. I forgot how much I paid for it, but I didn't buy it full price. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can pick one up online if you want one. Um, but you can wait for a coupon for 40 to 50% off at Joann's, Michael's, all the any of the craft stores. They always have that those really um, um, deep discount coupons. So save money there. Also, one thing that I noticed while doing that. It, well, punching the holes out is that if I went any less than four sheets at a time, um, they the the hole punch wasn't a clean cut, so I would have to yank it out. And even even still, yet right here, you can see I still have to kind of pull it out a little bit. And so I had to go back and trim up um, the circles with some scissors. It didn't there wasn't much, but I did notice that if I made a thicker stack of um, at least three. Um, I did four, it went, you know, it goes faster, obviously with a stack four, but it cut smoother too. So just a tip for you. As I went along, I was collecting my circle wax pieces that were cut in this baggie and you can see this is all that I ended up using, it, just this baggie full for the entire chandelier. So um, so to the, prevent them to, from getting everywhere, I put them in this bag and it helped it keep it organized. So 
setting those aside, the next step is painting my reef, reef form thing. And so I just mixed this glitter, glitter paint. I had a little bit of rose gold and also some white just so it wouldn't be plain white. And I'm mixing those together. This is just acrylic paint. I did notice that it kind of um, seemed to not really stick too well, but I wasn't overly concerned about it. I um, just went ahead and painted them and it gave pretty good coverage. I did have to go back and give it a second coat. And I also had to paint the smaller coat, I mean, I'm sorry, the smaller wreath hoop as well. Okay, time to thread our needle to put our shells together. I loop the thread over the needle and pull it through just so I can barely see the top and pull the needle out. Then I put the top of the thread through the eye of the needle and it loops on. So starting at the bottom, I poked a hole and strung the thread through and then also at the top. So we have our first faux shell on there. Um, I ended up switching this technique later on, but for now this is how I did it. I did about half of the strands with eight and the other half of the strands with five faux shells attached to them. So threading another needle for another strand, again I just Pull it so I can barely see the tip of the thread and loop it through the eye. And it goes on. Pretty easy. Um, so then I started doing like this. I stacked the top and the bottom, bottom together and then pierced them through. Then I would put another one, making sure that the thread was pulled through the top side and pushed it through to the other side. And this is how I did it. It went a little bit faster. Also, before I cut the thread at the end, I went ahead and made sure that there was a little bit of slack. I wanted about a half an inch of slack so that the tip of the shells were touching each other, but there was also still yet enough to tie and figure out how what I was going to do with the threads um, at the end. I still haven't figured it out. Um, this is just winging it as I go. So here I've started doubling two together and just stringing them together and then I open and I place another one right on the bottom of it and poke it through the top and string it through and this ended up being the way that I did it the rest for the continuation of the project and it for me it seemed like the fastest way Once I got to the end of the eighth one, I was um, stringing the string on both the top and the bottom of the bo of the last piece. Here I forgot and I thought it was a big deal, but at the end when I was putting it together, I ended up not tying it off at the end of the bottom one. So I'll show you, it'll make more sense at the end when I show you 
um, how I put it together. So here it is the next day and I'm still stringing shells along. This project wasn't very difficult but it did take a lot of time. So <clears throat> working at the table I started again just looping my needle through and doing a surgeon's knot to tie it off at the end. I think I failed to mention that at the beginning but I just did a single knot and then I did a surgeon's knot which is just looping twice before you pull through the loop and tighten it as you can see and just tighten it onto the first knot then on these ones these are the ones where I started doing only five pieces of wax paper circles per string and I also started leaving the last string the last shell the last wax circle unstrung I'll show you I'll show you what I mean So I'm really sorry guys, it looks like I didn't actually get the footage of what I was talking about. So here I'm doubling up my last shell, wax paper shell. That should be my last one. You see how I open it and I stab this last piece here? Don't do that. I ended up pulling it out and not using that. So Here I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to the knotted end of the shell of the string and I'm just placing a bead on there to hold it in place and I did this on both sides. I mean, not on both sides, I'm sorry, on both, both knotted ends. And actually I didn't even knot both ends. The hot glue held it in place pretty well so I decided that it didn't need to be knotted and I just went ahead and applied the hot glue and kept it in place and I snipped off any extra long piece that was in the end. After this, it's time to start assembling the chandelier and so I'll show you how I did that. I got these zip ties from Dollar Tree and I should have gotten the longer ones. In hindsight, um, it would be easier if I got the, the longer ones for the type of mount that I'm doing. I'm using the original light tray, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, so anyways, what I'm doing here is just attaching it together really easily like that and so what I was doing is taking it right from that outer piece of the small one and the inner piece of the larger one and putting those together but um, I needed to change this and so I'm gonna show a picture right here you can see I circled in red the area where you should attach it to it's the second one in not the first one so I just continue attaching these incorrectly Now it's time to start draping our shell over our shell strings over the frame. So what I did is that little slack that I put on the string, I draped two over one side and I dropped the three into the inside, if that makes sense. Here's a different angle for you if it helps, so it gives it a nice layering effect. And I continue to drop these over. I ended up changing this too, by the way. I ended up putting the ones with five on the larger outside of the hoop and putting the ones with the eight strung shells on the inside. I had three hanging over and five hanging down in the middle. So yeah, basically all this work I'm doing right here, I ended up redoing. I just didn't know it yet. But I, I wanted it to look uh, have a longer effect and I felt towards the end that this just didn't look how I wanted it to look. So here is what it looks like after I switched it. So you can see I have two hanging on the outside. Here's a view on the inside showing how it drapes over. 
so this is the strand of eight that's going on the inner ring and I'm separating the five and leaving a space in between the fifth and sixth one and grabbing the four pieces at the top and here I'm just inserting the longer strands of five and dropping the three in between. I'll try to slow that down for you. So here again I've created that space and I'm taking three in my hand placing the five right in the middle and just sliding the three in between where I need it to go and that's how I loop it easily. So taking the original glass off, I slipped it in between the top and the bottom rings. This is why I wanted longer zip ties. And I mounted it the same way that I would just putting the regular glass on and this is what it turned out like. If you guys liked this, um, please leave a comment below and hit like. Thank you so much for watching.